Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I want to talk about mobile input and, well, controlling things with your phone gyroscope. So here I've got a project set up where I can control this helicopter. Just tilt it and adjust it. And you may notice, like, I'm doing it with my phone. So as I tilt, the helicopter tilts with it and it just kind of moves along. So if I want to go backwards, just tilt back a bit and give it a second. I can kind of just tilt to the right and watch as we slowly start to fly kind of forward and right. I got a little bit of momentum built up. There we go. So you can see, here it is on the phone, by the way. Not that that's going to be a good video at all, but I wanted to show it anyway. So how do we do this? It's actually pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. So let's stop playing and take a quick look. First, I'll run you through the scene, just what's set up in there, and then we'll dive through the tiny amount of code required to make this all work. So you can see we've got a terrain, we've got a standard event system from adding a UI that's not even in here anymore. And we've got a helicopter, a light, a camera, and a V-cam. So the helicopter is this actual model right here with a couple scripts on it. I've got a helicopter script, we'll go through that shortly. We've got a body that's just the model, and then we've got a rotor for the back. It's got a little spin script here, you'll see that too. And a rotor on the top. Other than that, the only other thing that's somewhat interesting is the Cinemachine V-Cam. And the reason that I use this is so that we can keep our view kind of back and abstract or separated from the helicopter. So it doesn't have to be a child of the helicopter, but it's going to nicely follow it and I can adjust how tightly it follows it pretty easily. I don't want to go over the details of setting up a Cinemachine camera, but you can see here we've got a virtual camera. I just added it, go to Cinemachine and go add create virtual camera. We've got it following and looking at the helicopter, that one right there. And then I've got a follow offset that I just kind of played around with until it felt right. So if I go to the scene view, or actually here, let's go to the game view because you can see it better in here. I just drag these values back and forth until I got it to where I wanted it. So I adjusted the, uh, the Y and the Z here. And I left the aim as it is, but you can play with this too. You can pull that up and down. And if you don't have Cinemachine installed, you can just get that now in the package manager. So just go straight into window and package manager. You can pull Cinemachine right in under all packages. Just pick Cinemachine, hit install, and you're good to go. So let's start looking at the actual code here. How does this thing all work? How do we fly this helicopter around with the phone? Now before I do that, I want to take a real quick introduction to the simplest code in the project just because it's the simplest part and that's this little spin script that's spinning these rotors. You see here we've got an axis which is actually just a vector 3 that's exposed and gives us a X, Y, and a Z and I've got it set differently on each of these. So this back rotor is set to use the X axis, the other one is set to use the Y axis and then it has a spin speed. If we open this script up, like I said, extremely simple. We've got two serialized fields that you just saw there, and then we call transform.rotate, give it that axis and the spin speed. Nice and easy, right? So let's go into the actual code that does the work of flying the helicopter, and that's this helicopter script. But before we do, make sure you notice that there is a rigid body attached here because we're using a rigid body to control the physics here, to make it go up, make it go down. So let's open this helicopter script, and let's take a quick look. So we've got a speed here. We have an upward speed. In fact, am I even using this forward speed? I am. I want to remove this. So I had this in. I thought I had pulled it out and then I put it back in. So let's um, just comment that line right out. I don't think that we need a forward speed. We can use the upward speed to get a slightly better feel. Now in here, in our update, we get the device rotation and we're using a special script for that. I'll show you that in just a moment. And then we set the rotation of this transform to that device rotation, just the quaternion that we get back from here. We add force now in the upward direction of this thing so that it's just gonna be lift and as we tilt it'll go forward, as we lean back it'll go backwards. And then we clamp the velocity here. So this is an important thing that a lot of people ask about. Like, I wanna control the speed of this thing and I wanna use add force, but I wanna limit how fast it goes. I don't want it to keep going you know, exponentially faster and faster and faster. So what we do is just set the velocity to a vector3.clamped magnitude of the velocity. And here we pass in the original velocity. And then here, if I go back and hit comma, you see that we also can pass in the magnitude. So here's that max speed. So this is gonna limit how fast the thing goes. Now this will also limit how fast it can fall. So you gotta remember to keep that in mind. This will stop it from falling any faster than that max speed as well. 
So let's save that. In fact, I want to go back in and I'm just going to hit play one more time and we're going to watch the helicopter fly because this time it's going to fly from the, uh, the top only. There we go. This is more like what I was thinking. There we go. And as I lean forward, it flies forward. As I lean backwards, it should slow down and start to fly backwards. There we go. Perfect. And we can tilt left and right. So this is the control that I was looking for, which I think is a little bit better than the original, which was also adding forward speed. Oh, actually, I had set the speed to zero, so that's why we weren't seeing it. And there we go, right through the right through the floor. So, okay, let's open this thing up and let's look at the important part here: this device rotation. Now, when I went looking for just articles and videos on using the gyroscope there really wasn't much out there. I was kind of curious what kind of advice there was, what things existed, but I did stumble across this Unity Answers post. So let me just pull it right over here. So there's this nice post. Uh, somebody had asked how to obtain the role. And when I was going through all of the different ways to set it up, I really just liked this guy's solution. Now he said he had a blog post somewhere, but I couldn't find it. I'd love to link it in the video description. So if anybody happens to know, where it is, uh, please let me know so I can link that too. But here you'll see his class is just a static class that, um, oh, let's let's look at it in Visual Studio instead of in a web page. Let's go right in there. So it's a static class and it's got um, a public field for whether or not it has the gyroscope, which is really just returning back an already existing one. And then it has this quaternion git. This is the one that we're getting. So this it returns a quaternion that's named git. And if we go back to the helicopter, you see we're calling device rotation.git. Oh, I went to the wrong file. There we go. So git checks to see if it's initialized. If it hasn't initialized, it calls the initialization, which just enables it. Now this is an important thing. If you're trying to use the gyroscope, if you're not using this device rotation script, you just want to access it directly, you need to make sure to actually enable the gyroscope. This is something that I've forgotten many times and just wondered like, hey, why is the gyroscope not reporting anything? It's all zeros. Never turn the damn thing on. So make sure that you enable it. And then you can also optionally adjust the interval. So here he set it to 60 hertz and then marks his bool as initialized. So it doesn't initialize more than once. Then he checks to see if it's got a gyroscope. So if it does have a gyroscope, it reads the gyroscope identity. Otherwise, it just returns back a, a new uh, quaternion with identity of yeah, quaternion.identity. So if we have a gyroscope, we'll get back a rotation. And here he's doing the calculation to just map it so that the gyroscope matches up with uh, unity quaternions and unity directions. So that's really all we needed to do to make that work with that and as long as the helicopter here let's go to scene view as long as the helicopter is facing forward so this is the forward direction it's kind of facing out of the front it'll be good to go if that's not the case you may want to parent this thing in another object if you've got a uh, perhaps a helicopter that's facing up or sideways or whatever it is I know a lot of time art packages are you know, just not made quite right or ideal. So if you need to parent it, you can do that as well. Uh, last thing I want to show though is how I'm playing on the phone and having it show up here. So I've talked about this in the past, but if you haven't used it before, you can just simply grab the Unity Remote app. There we go, I'll put it right up here. But there's a Unity Remote app that you can grab on like the uh, Android store and I believe it's for iOS as well. And then if you go to edit and then you go to project settings and editor you just need to select the option right here so I picked any Android device and now it'll work but it's also important to make sure that you've gone to build settings and that you have uh, switched over to the correct platform if it's on Mac PC standalone you're not going to get the unity remote debugging so I think that's all there is to it I think I've kind of gone over everything here just to get this working and again let's just hit play one more time make it fly around but if you have some questions about how to do this or are kind of interested on expanding on this stuff, uh, you know, just other things to make this a cooler demo or you want to do some other type of gyroscope stuff that doesn't quite match up with this, uh, let me know in the comments below. Just drop one there and I'll take a look and see if I can uh, maybe expand on this, maybe even build this into some kind of fun little game because I really do like the idea of a helicopter when it's not falling right through the ground. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, hit alert buttons and share. And um, 
Also, check the description. I think I'll be starting a new giveaway soon, so just keep an eye out for that. Make can win something cool. All right, thanks again.